Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So today we'll be looking at what we call simplifying sets. So we're looking at sets. Set just means any number that has a square root on it. So any number inside the square root sign is called set. And set usually is for numbers that we cannot simplify. So when you can't have the exact answer and we leave it in the, in the square root sign, then we call it set. Okay. The purpose of a set is that we want to use the accurate answer rather than using an estimate. So we leave the numbers in a set form. So we're going to look at how easily to simplify numbers in set form. Okay. The first thing I always say is set only involves using square numbers, your perfect square numbers. So the first thing you have to do is to write down your square numbers. Which square number are the answers on your times table when you times a number by itself. So 2 times 2 is 4. So it means 4 is a square number. So our square numbers, we could have 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144. Okay, I will leave it there up to our 12 times table. So you must always write this down to help you and make it easier for you. Once we know this, then it's easy to simplify set form. So a set form, example of a set are all these questions. A typical example is if I write the square root of 2, you cannot tell me the exact answer to the square root of 2. So for me to get accurate answer, we leave it in the square root, and that is what we call set. It could be cube root, fourth root of any number that cannot be simplified. Now there are some simple rules that you must understand. One of the rules is this. If we write, for example, the set form of A times B, that can be written as square root of just A times by square root of just B. Okay, so you can split the numbers in that way. The same way, if I write the square root of A over B, that can also be written as just the square root of A over the square root of B. Then also, if I have the square root of A times by the square root of A, then that just gives me A. You need to remember this because these are the simple ones that I'm going to use here to do this type of work. So, let's go straight into this one. Square root of 40. You have to rewrite 40. What I mean by rewrite is write 40 using one of these square numbers here. So the first question to ask yourself is which of these square numbers we have written down can divide 40? So I can easily see that 4 can divide 40. So one number times 4 gives me 40. And the answer is 10. So I can write this the same as root of 4 times by 10. Okay. And what did we say from this rule? It says we can separate them. So here we can write this as square root of 4 times by square root of 10. Everybody knows what square root of 4 means. It means which of your times table, there is a number in your times table that when you times the same number, it will give you 4. So square root of 4 gives you 2. But we don't know the square root of 10 because it's not a perfect square, so we don't have an actual answer for that. So we keep that the same as square root of 10. So in this case, our answer to this question will be written as 2 root 10. Okay, 2 root 10. So the key thing is find a square number that can divide the number you have in the question. Let's look at the second question. Square root of 25. Okay, so I have enough space. Square root of 1, 2, 5. Again, go back to your square numbers. Is there any of these square numbers that can divide 1, 2, 5? Always remember, when a number ends with 5, it means it's on your 5 times table. So it's easy to know that my 5 times table, the square number of my 5 times table is 25. So this can be divided by 25. So then you write this as 25 
times by 5. That will give you 125. Going back to the first simple rule, split them into two. So that becomes root 25. That becomes times by root 5. We all know what square root of 25 is, because 5 times 5 is 25. So square root is find that number, which means it's 5. We don't know what the square root of 5 is, so we keep it the same. And then we are done. So instead of leaving our answer like this, we write it together as 5 root 5. 5 root 5. Okay. Then let's come to this third example here. To do this, never try to do 12 divided by 1, 2, 1. Never try to cancel them down. The best way is go by this simple second rule here. Split the numbers up first. So here, split this. Let me bring it down a bit so it doesn't, you don't get confused with that one. So it was 12 over 1, 2, 1. So split them using this second rule here. So that would be root 12 over square root of 1, 2, 1. I repeat, never try to cancel them down. Just play them in this way first. Now, let's take them one by one. Let's take the numerator, the top one first. Go back to our square numbers. Which of these square numbers can go into 12? The number there is 4. So I'm going to write it again. 12 will now become root 4 times by 3. When we go to the denominator, you can see this denominator is in my square numbers. So it means it's a square that we can simplify. We can simplify the number. So go back to your times table. Which of your times table has 121 on it? You can see it's 11. 11 times 11 is 121. So the down one simply becomes 11 because we can simplify that. So now let's carry on with only the numerator one. So in this case, we can split this up to be root 4 times by root 3, everything divided by 11. Root 4 is 2. Okay, so this will now become 2 times by root 3 all over 11. You remember I said this is the answer, but we don't want the times in the middle. So just write it together, final answer, 2 root 3 divided by 11. And that will be the answer. Okay. So let's look at exam star questions. Here it says 3 plus root 5 squared in the form of A plus B root 5. Usually when this comes in an exam, students get confused because of the letters A and B. Don't worry about that. All you have to do is expand your bracket first, simplify it, and you must make sure you get root 5 in your answer. Okay? So when we say expand the bracket, most students just do 3 squared and this squared. That is wrong. Write this. So 3 plus root 5 squared can be written as 3 plus root 5 times by 3 plus root 5. That is what it means. Okay? So now I'm going to expand this bracket one at a time. Take the first one, multiply by the first one here. So we're going to do 3 times by 3. That gives you 9. Okay, that's this one here. Then you take the same number to the last one there. 3 times by root 5. We just write it as 3 root 5. Because remember here, 2 times root 3, we just wrote it as 2 root 3. So when you times a number, a whole number by any set, we just write them together. Now that we have finished using this, let's use the second number here. 3 root 5 times by 3. Again, that is 3 root 5. Remember, they are both positives. That's why I put plus there. Then root 5 times root 5. If you go back here, I said root A times root A gives you A. So here, root 5 times root 5 will just give me 5. So that becomes 5. As we time goes on, I will explain that in detail. Now let's simplify this. We have number and number, set and set. So grouping it like terms. 9 plus 5, because they are the same. So 9 plus 5 gives you 14. Okay? Now we have the two sets in the middle. This is 3 lots plus 3 lots. So 3 
plus 3. If you know the set, do the numbers at the front because tell you how many there are. So here there are 3 lots. There are 3 lots here. So 3 plus 3 is 6. Then you bring your square root of 5. This is your simplest form. So now that you've got it, compare this to what the question wanted. Question said A plus B root 5. So that means your A equals the 14. Comparing this to that. Then your B here equals 6. So B equals 6. And you have finished. So you must always specify. Simplify them. Then compare this to that. Because I have the root 5 here. So whatever is left stands for the letters there. Okay. Now let's look at another exam question. 7 root 20 in the form K root 5. This is the clue. The hint says you should have root 5 in your answer. So if you don't get root 5, you are wrong. So it means express 20 using the number 5. So which means you keep the 7 the same. So I'm going to write it again. That would now become 7 root you have to have the 5. So I know that in my square numbers, 4 is the number that can go into 20. So it's 4 times 5. Okay. Take your time, step by step. Then carry on. Keep the 7 at the front again. Split them into 2. So that's root 4. That's root 5. What you have to remember is that the 7 at the front means times. Remember here, 2 times root 3 is 2 root 3. So here 7 root 20 means 7 times. So I'm just going to put this inside the bracket to show you my times. I don't want to write the times there. So I'll put it in the bracket. Now we keep our 7 bracket. Square root of 4 is 2 times by root 5. And we said this, we can write it together. So here we would have 7 times by 2 root 5. 7 times by 2 root 5. So in its simplest form, what would it be? Ignore the root 5, just do 7 times that. Because it says 7 lots of 2 root 5. So you do 7 times 2. So in this case, this would now become 14 root 5. Okay? And then compare this to this. It tells you K equals what? 14. Okay, when you compare the question to that, it tells you that K was 14. So in an exam, take your time. Don't rush through the numbers. Always remember to write down your square numbers first in your exam. Write it on the paper, which would help you. Now let's go to the last question. This, it just says simplify. Okay, so it's expanding double bracket as I've done here. So I'll go a bit faster in this one because we're running out of time. So we take this one here, 2 times 2 gives you 4. Take the 2 to that side, 2 times, remember there's a minus sign there. So 2 times minus 3 is minus 2 root 3. Now take the second number, times it there. This time this is positive, this is positive. So that's plus 2 root 3. Then you have root 3 times by minus root 3. Minus. When you do positive times negative, it's always negative. So that would be minus 3, not plus 3. So you can see from here that we have 2 minus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3. That will go away to 0. Because you're taking away the same thing from the same thing. So here, that goes to 0. So we only left with 4 minus 3, which equals 1. So the answer to this, in simplest form, is just 1. Quickly here, when I said this, so here, if I had root 5 times root 5, I said the answer is 5. The reason is this, because if we use the first rule, then I can write this as square root of 5 times 5. And we know that 5 times 5 equals 25. So you can see this is one of the perfect squares. So number that is on our square table here, which is our 5. So that means it's 5. Okay.
I did not write one as part of my square numbers, even though one is a square number, because one times one is one. The reason I didn't write it there is because when you are simplifying set, you can't use one. Because if I want to use one, it will be one times 40. So I still have the same number, I haven't changed it. That's why I didn't write one as part of my square numbers, and I started from there. So I hope this helps you whenever you have simplified set form. Remember the three easy ones that I have put there and use it in that particular way and it should be fine. So in my next video, I'll do rationalizing the denominator to finish the topic on sets. Thank you.